We're reviewing a 2019 Tiffin Wayfair 25QW and the special sauce on this rig is this thing behind me. It's a rear slide that slides out toward the back and makes way for a large queen size bed inside. The Tiffin Wayfarer competes with the Winnebago Navions and Views. And let's get this review started and see how it's gonna stack up. This is built on the 2018 Mercedes Sprinter chassis. So that's because this is a 2019 Wayfarer. Um, the 2020s are here on the lot, but they didn't have a 25 QW, which is the one I wanted to review. So this is the 2018 chassis. And so as far as specs, it's identical to the 2019 chassis in terms of engine specs. So it's got a seven speed uh, automatic transmission. This is a diesel engine. It's a three liter diesel engine, and it's capable of delivering up to 188 horsepower and 325 pound feet of torque. Now this is built on the cutaway chassis. This is not the van chassis. So by cutaway chassis, it means that the whole front section that you see here and the cab is all outfitted by Mercedes. It'll look just like the van. But as we kind of step around over here, you can see everything behind the cab here is built out by Tiffin. So this is the super structure of the shell and everything from the back, that's all built out by Tiffin. Okay, so that's what we mean by cutaway chassis. This clocks in at a healthy 25 feet, seven inches. So this is definitely on the longer side it's not gonna fit in a standard parking space. You wouldn't expect that really on many Class Cs at all. It's seven feet, six inches wide. And I believe that is with the mirrors here extended. The exterior height is 11 feet, four inches. Again, that's because we have a basement down here. So compared to the van chassis, we have about two extra feet of height. And that gives us an interior standing height of six feet, eight inches. So we get quite a bit more standing interior standing height in these class C's and we do in a class B. And then finally, 54 cubic feet of exterior storage. The real question is, does it have enough cargo carrying capacity? We're gonna talk about that in just a second. All right, as we head around to the side here, you can see this is the slide here. It's not too big. This coach does have two slides. So this is uh, on the driver's side. On the inside here, we have a sofa. And then underneath here, we do have two access panels, but these are not storage compartments. You can see that's your propane and this is your dump station. So take a look. This is one of the advantages that you get to a class C. This dump station is enclosed into a heated compartment. So this is the basement. That's that extra two feet of height we were talking about. So this is, um, this is your black tank. There in the back, you can see your gray tank. This, these are all your dump valves here and they're all enclosed inside of this compartment, which is also heated. This is really good in terms of four season capabilities. You even have an opening down here in the compartment where you can stick your three inch sewer hose up into here to connect and then you just shut the door and, it, and it's pretty well insulated and, and protected from the elements. Everything that you see here, the tanks, the freshwater tank and all the tanks are all inside a heated basement. Even your dump stations inside of a heated space. We crawled underneath, we didn't see any exposed water lines. All the water lines are routed internally. And so this is a very capable four season coach. You're gonna be able to use this in lower temperatures. As long as you have the heater on on the inside of the coach, it's gonna keep all these things from freezing. So pretty good four season capability on this Tiffin Wayfarer. All right, as we head on back on the driver's side, we have a few more compartments here. Storage. So this is your water hookup. You can see you have whole coach water filtration, your water pumps back here. You can keep your hose back here as well. Um, you can pop it up through here. Again, this will just help keep all of your water lines in a heated compartment. They won't freeze during the winter. You also have your black tank Santa flush here. So you can flush out your black tank. That's always an appreciated feature. It just keeps that tank clean and, and keeps it from smelling. And as we come back here, this is the last compartment that we have here on the driver's side. Uh, this is kind of new and unique. So this is your permanent shore power cable. They actually have it already connected in. So all you have to do is just take this and drop this down through here and then hook it up to your, to your shore power. You can see you've got your backup camera. Uh, you've got your city water fill over here and you've got your hitch in the back. Now, um, there's no ladder that I see on this, but I believe we got a shot up at the top as well. And this coach has 
optional, only I believe one solar panel available to you. Now come on around to the passenger side. We've got a few more storage compartments under here, a hookup for connecting up a barbecue. And then here we have our pretty beefy 3.2 kilowatt uh, diesel generator. We've got even more storage down here up front with an AC outlet. And for those of you who like to watch TV ah, out in nature, careful, that thing can smack you in the face. That's a safety hazard there. That thing came up a lot, uh, pretty quickly there. It almost hit me in the face, so you can see. So might need to temper that down a little bit, Tiffin. But you do have, uh, I believe this is a 32 inch uh, LED TV here with a sound bar. So if you want to have your tailgating parties or whatever, you've got it here available on the Tiffin. Now, so we have 54 cubic feet, and this is just of exterior storage. We haven't even talked about the interior storage. And it's always important for the manufacturer to balance the amount of storage against what the coach can safely carry. We call that the occupant and cargo carrying capacity. You can always find that it's either on the doors like this, or it's on the front driver's side door. It'll be a sticker. You wanna look for that. In this case, on this coach that we're looking at, surprisingly, the occupant and cargo carrying capacity on this coach is 672 pounds. Yes, you heard that correct, 672 pounds. That is not a lot at all. Now, when we take the weight of a driver and a passenger out and a full tank of water, this coach has a 38 gallon freshwater tank, 8.3 pounds per gallon. What is our net cargo carrying capacity? I've never seen this before, folks. It's a negative three pounds negative three pounds. It means already with this coach, without putting anything in it at all, loading it up, just yourselves and a full tank of water, you're already over its safe legal capacity of seven, 672 pounds, you're over by three pounds. So that is the biggest flaw and the biggest ding against this coach. Tiffin, you really need to work on that. That's just not safe, it's not good to have a cargo carrying capacity that, that's, that is that low. All right, let's head in, take a look at the driver's seating position. All right, now keep in mind that this is the older 2018 chassis, so we don't have all the fancy stuff like the electronic seat controls and things like that, but I'm gonna move the seat all the way forward and you can see if you're shorter, you're gonna be okay in here. And I move it all the way back and I can tilt it even further back because there's really nothing behind me. And then on the sprinters, I've got both tilt and telescoping capabilities. All right. So now with the steering wheel pushed all the way in, the seat pushed all the way back, you can see, I mean, really good arm length, lots of leg room here, steering wheels all the way up. So the Sprinter has some of the best uh, and most spacious driver seating position available. Since we're in here, let's talk a little bit about 2018 versus 2019, that safety feature. Still, even though this is a 2018 coach, um, it does have some of the best safety features on the market. It does have the lane keep assist as well. So it'll warn you if you're drifting out of your lane. It does not have the blind spot detection. That's only because uh, remember, this is a cutaway chassis and Mercedes did not create anything behind this pillar. Uh, so they can't guarantee that their sensors, they don't know what manufacturers are putting back there. But even still, just to have the lane keeping assist, the collision detection passive systems, make this one of the safest coaches out there. Now, they've upgraded the uh, standard navigation system and radio system uh, from the Becker, which is normally in the Mercedes Sprinter to the Kenwood here. It's just a little bit of a larger screen. And also this is a touch screen, but it is not like the 2019, which has a massive 10 inch touch screen. Also, these do not have the uh, heated seats. They don't have the electronic seat controls. And of course it doesn't have the power sliding door because we're not in the van. But other than that, I mean, really, I mean, for the price difference you get except for those active safety features, you get almost everything else, same engine, everything else that's available on the 2019 chassis, but you're gonna be paying a lot less for it uh, on this model year chassis. All right, stepping inside the coach, we saw what it looked like with all the slides in, and now you can see how spacious this coach looks with both the slides out. So we have two slides. We have the driver's side slide here where the sofa is, and we have the rear slide in the back, which goes out back that allows us to have a queen size bed 
and a permanent bedroom in the back. But I got to hand it to you. I mean, I, don't, I personally, I don't like a lot of slides in an RV, but I mean, in this particular case, the two slides really do open this coach up a lot and give you a lot of space. By moving that slide to the back, we're able to have a lot more storage and kitchen counter prep space here, a larger bathroom, and still provide room for a large living area up front. Okay, so here we are inside with the slide in, and you can see, I mean, there's pretty good space inside here, even with both slides in. So you can still use the couch. This is not the sofa couch. This is not the trifold sofa. So this doesn't turn into a bed. I mean, you could curl up and kind of use it as a day bed, but I still got plenty of room here. Could use the galley, no problem. And you can see, I can get back here to the bathroom, no problem as well. The bedroom, because there's a slide on the back. So the bedroom's kind of unusable, which is, you know, to be expected. But really, I mean, if you just want to pull over on the side of the road, make yourself a meal, just take a break, use the bathroom. This coach is totally usable with the slides in. All right, let's take a look now and put the slides out and see how much more open this coach feels. And now I'm going to put the bed out as well. I'm going to extend that. And now I'll just put the bed down. And you can see, I mean, this is the beauty about this layout the, uh, on the Wayfair is this extra bedroom back here is only made possible because of the rear slide. You saw when the bed was in, there's virtually no space back here. But now when the slide is out, I've got a queen size island bed, which I can access from either side getting in and out. Now here we are inside the 25QW's three-piece dry bath. So three-piece means that we have a shower and a toilet and a sink, but the shower is separate. It's not sharing the area with the, the other two pieces. Now, as far as bathrooms go, even though this is a, a smaller bathroom, there's still plenty of room. You can see here I'm seated on the toilet. I've got really good elbow room here. I've got nothing above, nothing behind my head, and I feel pretty comfortable here. I like the look of the bathroom. I like this bowl sink kind of the upgraded residential controls here. You have uh, multiplex wiring lighting controls. You have a set of AC outlets down here and storage above here. You always need a little bit of storage inside of your bathroom. Great that we have dedicated ventilation and a true huge rooftop fantastic fan here. We also have ducted AC and heat in the bathroom as well. Here I am stepping in the shower. It is pretty much a one piece enclosure. This is, um, Plastic, as you can see here, it's not very, not very solid. I don't feel very good about that. Um, and then, you know, there is a seam down at the bottom, but you know, 510, I got this skylight above me. So if you're six feet or taller, you're, you know, as long as you stand here, here, you're gonna have some good headroom. There's some additional LED lights back here. Now, I did notice some uh, quality issues in here. I just want to point out, uh, and you can make your own judgment, but uh, these things get a lot of traffic through them and, and things do get broken. So in this particular case, this thing up here, which is this thing laying down here, looks like it's flimsy plastic up here and it looks like it was just sheared off. And so, you know, that's just a quality concern there. And some of these LED lights, as you can see up here, they're not, they, they're, they don't look like they're secured into the ceiling as well. So I always look for stuff like that, just little quality things that may, um, be problems down the road. The other thing I'm not keen on in this shower is this is one of those retractable vinyl doors you can see here. I just, I don't, I don't like these. I'd prefer to see glass or something else, but I mean, I get why they put it in because these are a lot lighter and they're already way over their weight limit on this coach. So I get why they put it in. And this is a little flimsy looking because the top rack, the bar that we just saw, which is what this would glide through is off. Usually this would be much tighter. All right, let's take a look at the island type queen size bed back here, which is a luxury and I really like. I mean, the fact that I can get, you know, in and out of bed, each person doesn't can get in and out of bed on their own side without disturbing the other person. This bed is 60 by 74 inches. So here I am, 510. You can see I just barely fit on this bed. Um, I maybe have an inch behind my head. I mean, there's good width for two people here, but uh, the bed could stand to be a little bit longer. Um, as far as bed comfort, you know, it, it, it's okay. You know, this mattress, if I'm being honest with you, it feels like the type of mattress you'd have on a hideaway bed. 
that's kind of what it feels like to me. I mean, it's okay. You're going to be okay in this, in this bed. I've certainly slept on mattresses that are thicker and, and more comfortable. So here you can see, this is the, the thickness of the mattress here. Um, and you can see it's about the thickness of maybe what you'd find on a hideaway bed. And then under here, you can see there is no slat system or anything like that. So it's just sitting on a flat surface, which is also not helping it have any give. But the big plus about this um, bed and this layout is the fact that it's a island queen size bed. That's very rare to find. Uh, and it certainly makes it a lot easier for a couple to be in here sleeping and getting in and out of the bed without disturbing the other person. Now there's also uh, another option for up front in the lounge, you can opt for a tri-fold sofa bed if we wanna come up here and take a look. This is not it, this is not the tri-fold sofa bed, but you can replace this with a tri-fold sofa bed, that's a height of bed, and that's 54 by 74 inches. And then up here on the bunk, you can get another person to sleep up here. So with the height of bed option, this coach can sleep up to four people. In this configuration that we see here, this coach can comfortably sleep three people. All right, let's talk a little bit about safety and movement and trip hazards and things like that. So pretty, this coach is pretty good. It does have a step down into the cab. That is very uh, typical of these Class Cs because they raise them up in order to put the basement in. I like the fact that you can raise this up uh, so it makes it a little bit easier to step into the cab uh, without bumping your head and ducking. Although you're probably not going to be driving around with that up all the time. So when it's down, you are going to have to remember to kind of duck down to get in. As we look to the back, very good as well. There are no step ups or step downs. And we saw, as we saw when the slide was in, I mean, I can walk front to back in this coach and pretty much not really hit my uh, arms on anything. It's a little bit narrow in here, but it's pretty good. Now, let's talk about also, when we talk about safety, we would need to talk about positive locking as well. Um, I'm happy to, to report that these cabinets here, see this there, and this latch down below, these are positive locking. So when you put that in, this is not just decorative and you push it, that, well, <laughs> that's a quality issue right there. Now that is a quality issue. All right, what's supposed to happen is, okay, so here's what's happening. See this thing here, it's spun, it's spinning. It's not, it's not tight enough. And so it was spun off to the side. So when I locked it, this thing was not latching. So that's just, you know, that's just a little bit of a quality issue for me. It's plastic and it came loose. So adjust it, lock it, and it's still not working. These are supposed to be positive locking. These are supposed to work where you push these in and if something heavy is inside of there and it hits the cabinet door, because this is positive locked, it won't open the door. But as you can see, I can just, even though it's positive lock and engaged, I can open it. That's no good. It's like they want the benefit of having positive locking cabinets, but they're not actually positive locking. So the television that we have up front here is also not positive locking, which is unfortunate. It can have a tendency as you're driving down the road, the constant vibrations to loosen the things that tighten this in. And then what happens is this thing starts to move around like this as you're driving down the freeway. And then you have to like pull over and tighten it and put it back again. So that's unfortunate. The television in the back bedroom is positive locking. That's good news. These are not huge deals, but I just, I'd like to see Tiffin kind of work on these. So these side panels here, these are just Velcroed on, as you can see. And um, it's hard to get them completely lined up so that they, so that they stick. And even when you do, they have a tendency to just kind of drop off again. Look, none of these work. Well, that thing fell down. <laughs> All right, so the perennial question, do we like the microwave up and up high or down low? Well, they chose to put it down low on the Wayfair 25QW. So this is a convection microwave, meaning you are gonna be able to bake in it and that's always good. But as it, you know, being down low, this one's not as low as some, but you know, you are gonna bend over a little bit. Some of you may like it down here and not prefer it up higher because you have a tendency when it's up higher to maybe reach up and spill something on yourself. So this is a 6.5 cubic foot three-way refrigerator uh, with a separate freezer. So uh, here's your freezer, let's see inside here. All right, pretty good size freezer. Refrigerator. Now, 
Again, these are good because as you can tell, this is actually positive locking. So if I try to open this, these are not gonna open at all. So I like that. Microwave's also positive locking. Three-way refrigerator means it runs off propane as well as from your batteries or when you're plugged into shore power. You have to determine if having the availability of propane is more important to you than on a compressor-driven refrigerator, which only operates off of electricity, but compressor refrigerators cool down much faster and they tend to maintain their temperatures in really hot weather outside, whereas three-way refrigerators will struggle. So you'll have to determine what's more important to you. Um, if you don't have enough battery power and you don't have enough um, solar power to like recharge your batteries, compression, compression refrigerators can really be a pain in the butt because they're constantly running their motors to cool down and they're drawing your batteries down. So if you have low capacity uh, lead acid batteries now, this coach doesn't, it has plenty of lead acid batteries to run the compressor refrigerator. This is kind of where all the multiplex wiring, you can see this is the Cat5 wiring back here, all comes in. But um, I'll let you make your own determination. I mean, we've seen other coaches and kind of how they tidy cord everything up and it's all nice and neat. And this looks uh, like a bit of a rat's nest back here. Just shows a little bit, I think, the, the care, the quality that Wayfair takes in the construction of these things. Down here, these are some of the holes that are cut for access. They've stapled the flooring onto the um, OBS boards down below. Uh, but these are just quality issues, you know, you should take a look at and just make sure you're comfortable with. It's not the end of the world. Okay, I just wanna show you, so this is the cabinet, the wardrobe cabinet that is above all that multiplex wiring. And I just wanna show you here, this is, I don't know what this little box protrudence is, but all they did is they kind of put this, this is just like a tape that they put on, and they just kind of covered this whole box with this tape. I don't know, to me it just looks a little, Haphazard, I guess is the words. I'm pointing out some of these small things for you. They're not deal breakers by any means, but again, gives us some indication idea of the level of care and quality that Tiffin's putting into making these coaches. Well, let's talk a little bit about this lounge. So when the slide is out, as you see here, we have plenty of room. We have a large opening window behind us. We have lots of storage. A table can be placed here to use, or you can move the pedestal table there and the two cab seats can be swung around as well to be utilized as a part of one whole large uh, lounge here. Now, this configuration, so this is the just the normal sofa. This does not convert into a bed. As far as comfort, I mean, it's, it's pretty comfortable. I mean, I think that if you're a little bit shorter, it might be that these are too deep for you. You'll need to come in and, and try it yourself. Now you have a couple other options that you can replace this uh, sofa with. Theater seating, which have electric, electronically controlled uh, like ottomans and reclining seats as well. While the cab seats, it's great that the cab seats do spin around and kind of become integrated into this space, but take a look. Because the floor of the main part of the coach is quite a bit higher than the floor of the cab, as you'll see here, when I come over here and sit in the cab, you can see it's, pr I'm pretty, I mean, my legs are pretty high because this floor, I mean, it's, a, it's about a good 12 inches down from this. Now I can mitigate this a little bit. I can raise this, but I've raised it as much as I can now. So this is about the maximum height of my seat. And it's not terrible, but it is just a little bit odd. And I wanted to make you aware of that. Now, as well on this coach, you do have some nice amenities here. So you have reading lights above, and then you have a set of AC outlets on each side. The AC outlets in this coach, there is no inverter in this coach. So that's something to be aware of. I was surprised. I spent probably 10 minutes <laughs> looking for an inverter in this coach, and then I had to go ask the salesperson. And there is no inverter in the standard model of this coach. The only way that you get an inverter is if you get the upgrade to the electric theater seating. Then you get a standard 1000 watt inverter and you can upgrade that to a 2000 watt inverter if you want. So, but when you normally have this coach, these outlets are not hot unless you're actually plugged into shore power or you're running your generator. So just be aware of that. This coach comes with two group 27 lead acid batteries. That gives you a total of around 360 amp hours of capacity. Now remember, these are lead acid, meaning because of the way they discharge, you really need a 
take that capacity and half it. So you have about 180 usable amp hours. It's, it's pretty good. It's just a little bit under 200. I like to see the threshold at around 200 amp hours because I think that'll meet about 90% of everyone's needs out there. At this time, there is no lithium upgrade available on the coach. It does come standard with a 3.2 uh, kilowatt diesel generator. So that's gonna pull fuel right off of your diesel tank. I believe just 170 watts of solar is optional. And that's really a pity considering how much roof space that we saw up there on the top of the coach. They could easily put three or 400 watts of solar up there, but uh, apparently they only offer a 170 watt option. As well, uh, this coach does come with multiplex wiring. So that's just the new standard. Now, instead of running individual uh, power lines for every switch and things like that, they run Cat5 cabling throughout the coach and that Cat5 cabling then can carry the power for a bunch of, and they go to controllers basically throughout the coach. So you can have all different types of touch panel or other types of controllers throughout the coach that let you control your lighting as well as other electronic uh, components in the coach like your awning and your heating system and your vents and things like that. So this coach does come with multiplex wiring. All right, let's talk a little bit about tank capacities. So this coach comes with a fairly generous 32 gallons of fresh water. We have 33 gallons of gray water and 28 gallons of black water. Now, um, it's good to see a big black water and, and large gray water tanks because those are the tanks that generally fill up quickly when you're out boondocking. And when they're filled up, you have to pack up, leave your location and go dump your tank. So larger gray and black water tanks in my book are always a priority over a larger fresh water tank. But in this case, we have pretty good across the board tank capacities and we have a pretty good liquid propane uh, capacity as well. We have 16 gallons of liquid propane. So I consider this a pretty good boondocking rig um, given its tank capacities. Now, what is one of these gonna set you back? Now, keep in mind, we're in a 2019 model that's built on the 2018 Sprinter chassis. Uh, so that automatically means that you're gonna be like, you know, maybe 15 to $20,000 less because we're not on the new Mercedes chassis. So this particular uh, coach that we are in here is dealer priced at 110,000. By the way, if you're interested in it, uh, give Happy Days RV here in Sacramento a call. So it's 110,000. Its coach warranty is only one year. That's really disappointing. I, you know, um, when you're paying, when you pay really over a hundred thousand dollars for a coach, to me, you should be getting something longer than a one-year warranty. It does come with one year of roadside assistance. There is two, only two three-point seatbelts. Those are the ones in the cab. Um, there are lap restraints here, uh, but they are not three-point seatbelts here on the on the sofa. And this coach, as configured here can sleep uh, three people, but you could sleep up to four people if you get the optional hide a bed configuration for the lounge. So what do I like about this rig? Well, I do like the layout. I think it's uh, nice, interesting, intriguing, having a slide in the back that gives you a full-size permanent private bedroom in the back with a queen-sized island bed and at the same time then still gives you a very spacious living area up front, a large galley, and a large three-piece uh, dry bath. So I like that about the coach. What don't I like about the coach? I'm always gonna say it, I don't like the one-year warranty. I think you deserve better, I think we deserve better, and I think Tiffin can do better than a one-year warranty on this coach. I'm not keen on some of the build quality issues that I'm seeing on this coach. It's not the end of the world, but I still think that Tiffin, you know, they're new. They've been in the Class A market forever and they make some great products in the Class A market. They're just coming into the Class uh, C market. And I think that they need to concentrate a little bit on their quality uh, and just bring that up more toward the Tiffin brand. Um, no deal breakers in here, but just some things are a little bit concerning for me. But other than that, I think you ought to come, you ought to take a look at, at the Tiffin Wayfair 25. QW, it's a very unique layout. I think you do get for $110,000, a lot of bang for your buck. And I think for many of you, this layout, this coach with its set of features is gonna be a great coach for you. It's gonna meet a lot of your needs. All right, that wraps it up for today. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and found this review at least a little bit helpful. And I'll see you all again next time. Take care, bye-bye.